Good afternoon and welcome to Champions Field here at Stadium Park on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Delphus, Ohio. I'm Nick Garlock alongside Evan Skeleter and we have the pleasure of calling an NWC matchup between the Bluffton Pirates and the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats. Evan, how you doing, my I'm friend? I'm doing great, man. Happy to be outside on a beautiful day. I'm glad I have the shade. Thank you to Jacob Hot Dog O'Neill for setting us up right where the sun isn't. But you can see on the camera, beautiful sunny day, only a few clouds in the sky, maybe a little bit hotter than we'd like. But either way, I'm looking forward to a nice setting for football and some Northwest Conference action. Delphus Jefferson is uh, going to kick this one away to get it started. Bluffton comes into today's game undefeated 3-0. They have only given up one score all season long, Evan. They have looked as dominant as ever. And coming into the season, there were still some questions about this Pirate team and what they may look like and what can the expectation be for this season. But they have come out here early and answered all of those questions. Yeah, they really have. I mean, they have won every game handedly. They look great. They look efficient. Last year, a team that could pass and run, and this year doing exactly the same. We're going to see their offense come out here. Uh, great quarterback and take Geese. 20 completions on 33 attempts at 60 percent he's thrown for 394 yards four touchdowns and an interception but he's also rushed 25 times for 199 yards that's good for 63 yards per game so he can get it done both ways and then another sophomore Parker level 24 carries 369 yards that's an average of 15 yards per carry just so we're clear folks 123 yards per game uh, six touchdowns to go along with it. So this is a pirate offense that can really get the job done. And they're going to start off with a handoff to Parker in the backfield as he makes his way up through the middle, a pickup of about five on first down. And this is what Bluffton will do to you. They'll just pound the rock. They'll chip away at you five, four, three-yard plays, but those are so effective, right? And then all of a sudden, you'll see them pull the ball back and throw the ball over the top. It's a really, really tough offense to stop because, again, they can get it done in many ways. It's going to be a big first opening possession for the defense of the Wildcats. Delphus Jefferson got off to a good start this season as they knocked off North College Hill. But they've had a rough couple of weeks as right up the middle you see Gieske make a man miss, made another miss, and he is on the move as he is going to take this probably about 75 yards for the touchdown. What a start for the quarterback, Tate Gieske. And look how simple that was. They just go off tackle, right? through the right side, and Gieske with some lead blockers, follows them, gets up the hole, and then makes a couple guys miss, and you can see the athleticism that he possesses. Folks, only a sophomore, but this guy plays like a veteran. Tate Gieske gets the first Laudix Jewel response, or touchdown, excuse me, of the game. It's now Bluffton gonna come out, and they're gonna try the extra point, see if they can't push this to a seven nothing lead here early in the first. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. A quick start for the Bluffton Pirates. They're on top, 7-0. The Wildcats get the ball next on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. I'd also like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Citizens National Bank. Citizens National Bank, see how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. A quick strike from sophomore quarterback Tate Gieske as the Bluffton Pirates on top, seven to nothing. And we were just kind of getting trying to set the table and really thought that it was going to be important for that Delphus defense to get off to a good start. And you saw Gieske do what he does so well. Is it looked a couple of times that Delphus had the angle, maybe able to get him down, but he quickly made them miss. But here's a nice return up the middle as Delphus gets off to a good start here as they'll have great field position for their first possession. And that's how you want to respond after giving up a big touchdown, get a nice return, catch it on the move, and. A little momentum going your way, hopefully, as the offense comes out. We talked about Bluffton's offense already, but on the other side, Ford Delphus well, Jefferson. They'll be led by Carter Agner, the quarterback. He's rushed the ball 41 times for 162 yards. He's also passed 44 times, completed 23 of those for 255 yards. This time, though, he'll pitch it out to Dean Trentman. Trentman trying to find some space off of the left side of that line, able to get a positive gain for a pick of about two. Trentman this season, 31 carries, 135, or excuse me, 126 yards coming into this one. And the MO of this Pirate defense, though, is physicality. They will get up and they will make plays. They're led by 
senior linebacker Landon Worcester, all-state linebacker last year, and a great running back as well. But defensively, he is tough, and you'll see him all over the field. And you see this defensive line, just three down linemen, but they do some nice work. Quick pass to the outside. Nice job gathering that in. A little bit of a seam, some positive yardage that time as the Wildcat offense is getting off to a good start here on this opening drive and bring up third and short. That's one way to attack a physical defense. Spread the field out a little bit, get the ball into some space, let some playmakers make a play. And I like that pickup on second down to make this third manageable. This Wildcat offense averaging just over 16 points a game coming into this one. And they are facing the best defense in the NWC as Bluffton comes into this one averaging 3.3. But that's a little bit misleading as they've had shutouts uh, outside of one game so far this year. Yeah, absolutely. And last year, this team had nine shutouts, or excuse me, eight shutouts in the regular season, which is incredible. And right now, a big stop on third down, dropping them back for a yard. You can see. The penetration up front, just tough physical play, winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, getting in the backfield and bringing the runner down for this fourth and four. So Make now three, excuse me. After that loss on third down, Delphus Jefferson, even though they are near midfield, they do not want to give a short field to the Pirates, so they're going to pump this one away. A promising opening drive for the Wildcats gets snuffed out on a tough third down play. The Pirates did a nice job of clogging that hole. Punt is going to be away. Going to hit right around the 15-yard line and field it. Going to be moved upfield before being taken down right around the 25-yard line. And that's where the Pirates will come out and they will go back to work. Only three plays there on that first drive, Evan. Uh, that was all they needed prior to Gieske being able to break a big one. So if you're in the Jefferson defense, you haven't really even had much of an opportunity to kind of see what this pirate offense is going to throw and what kind of adjustments you can make. Yeah, I think this possession is just kind of a reset, right? You gave up a big play. Sometimes that happens, but you can't let that stick with you, right? You have to come out here, stick with the game plan. I'm sure they spent a lot of time in the film room this week looking at this Bluffton offense, looking at some of those offensive line schemes, right? And so you have to make sure that you don't deviate from that too quickly. See if what you planned can work. Gieske in the backfield, waits for the snap, going to go to the air. Quick quick out, and this one's going to be taken back to the middle of the field before being dropped, as that was number four, and I lost it quickly. There it is, Griffin Stackhouse. Yeah, and Stackhouse is a great, great athlete for this team. You'll see a lot of jet sweeps where he's getting the edge. He's got a lot of wheels. He's a track athlete, made it deep in uh, in the OHSA track. You call them playoffs? What do you, what do you call it for track? Not uh, really playoffs? Yeah. Tournament? Um, tournament. How about that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Postseason. You, <laughs> you know. Go. But either way, Stackhouse, uh, a great athlete. You'll see him quite a bit tonight, today. Yeah, he, this time, Geese just going to pull this one back. Just a read option play that time and decided to keep it himself. And that's going to be good enough for a, our first first down of the game. Our first downs today are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpark, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Right there. His other option was to give the ball to Landon Worcester. Worcester actually on this team, the third leading rusher. Last year he led the team in rushing, and this year, again, he plays defense and he's a tremendous defender, so his workload on offense has just been a little bit reduced just to give him some, some extra juice, I suppose, on the defensive side. Here comes Stackhouse on the sweep, waiting for his blocker, showing a lot of patience. And Gets forced out of bounds, or actually got forced out of bounds by his own player there. I told you Worcester's a good defender, so good that he's forcing <laughs> his own guys out of bounds, right? Still a good pickup on first down to make this second and short. So coming into this one, Delphus Jefferson leads the all-time series against Bluffton 31-20 since 1972. As Jefferson has fallen on some hard times here as of late, but this is a program that has a rich tradition and a lot of history. They're not used to kind of these uh, these woes of losing that they've seen over the last maybe four or five years. Yeah, no question. A storied program, and you know, small schools will have their ups and downs. I'm sure, they'll rebound. Great stop right at the line for the Wildcats as they wrap up 28. Parker Lovell. And that is going to be just enough, though, for Lee Samuels. There's to be chicken first down, but a great job by the Wildcat defensive line to grab a hold of him and not let him go any farther. Yeah, hey, you give up a first down, but you have to feel good about just a short stop. Bluffton's a, a good running team, so the more short gains you can force, the more you, or the better you feel, excuse me, on the defensive side. 
First and 10 from the 48 yard line. Empty backfield with Gieske. Five wide receivers. Going to go to the air. Looks to get rid of it quickly. Just out into the flat. Looking to make a man miss. And he's going to get stopped. Not uh, before he can pick up a game by that's Quinn. And I'm going to. It's Eaches. Eaches. Yeah, Eaches. Eaches. There we go. Yep, yep, See, yep. it's always beneficial when you have a, right. a local with the, when you're calling one of the teams. Oh, yeah. Great family. The Eaches is. Three kids. All have done great work in the high schools and actually two of them have gone to Bluffton University and I've had the pleasure of getting to know them but yeah it, you know this Bluffton team is so good at getting their athletes out into space right that's a quick pass it's only three yards down the field and that's that's an athlete that they want to just catch the ball turn with space to make a play now Delphus Jefferson did a really nice job flying to the ball there and making sure he didn't have that space but here you'll see Stackhouse with the fake He's going to pull it down call his own number dances around makes a couple of guys miss before he picks up about another three yard, three, four yards on that one to bring up third and short. It's a good patient run right there from Gieske. He didn't have a ton of space, but just kind of used his awareness to find the extra space, dance around a couple defenders and fall forward for a few. So a third and manageable here, three yards to go. Gieske, two wide receivers in the shotgun. Parker in the backfield. Going to take the snap, hand this one off. Parker right up the middle, almost untouched as he is finally taken down. Great open field tackle that time. As that is going to be Landon Worcester on the carry there. Oh, sorry right about up that. the middle. Yep. That's all right. That's all right. One's 28, one's 27, similar size. So. And it was uh, Kellen Brotherwood who had the nice uh, open field tackle there for the Wildcats. Now before Bluffton picks up another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Bunch trips on the left side now. Another quick pass to the outside. Stackhouse goes right through, almost untouched into the end zone for another Laudic Jewelry first down and no, or a touchdown, and it's not. He actually stepped out of bounds on that far sideline. The official right there. It looked like he had gotten through and was going to get into the end zone, but stepped out of bounds. Either way, though, it's going to be a least famous recipe chicken first down, and Bluffton is going to be set up inside the Pants Donuts and Cream Red Zone. And again, you see a nice safe play, right? An easy pass just across the field, get the ball to an athlete, and Stackhouse makes no mistake, right? Turns on the Jets right up the field, had a couple blockers there on the bubble screen as well. It's a good, well-designed play from Bluffton. Wooster takes the handoff, works off the left side. He's met by a whole host of Wildcats. Picks up about three on the carry. Again, you'll take that, right? Forward, marching, pirate offense, closer and closer to the goal line. Likely four down territory, three yards away. It's going to be second and goal for the Pirates as they look to extend their lead on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. You know, we talk about the athletes on this team. Parker Lovell averaging 123 yards a game. Gieske 66, Worcester 43. Here's Gieske going to roll out, looks to throw. He's going to get met, and that's a fumble. That ball is down. Delphus Jefferson picks it up. A huge play for the Wildcats. And that is number 23, Dean Trentman. Trentman picks that one up. And I did not see who fumbled or who caused that fumble. I couldn't see the number, but that is a huge defensive play for the Wildcats. And they are right back in business. And that one's created by the defensive backs. No one opened downfield for Gieske to throw to. He tried to buy some time by rolling out of the pocket. But good pursuit and a little strip sack there and a big turnover. And that's got to feel good for Jefferson as they were looking like they were going to give up a score. Instead, they get the ball back. A decent field position, too, at the 26. Now Agner in the backfield along with Trentman. Waits for the shotgun. He has four wide receivers out. Tries the hard count. They get bluffed in the jump. They're going to get five the easy way. Or no, excuse me. It was that one's going to go on the Wildcats. And it looked like the hard count had um, drove Bluffton to the offsides penalty, but it actually goes against that line of Delphus Jefferson. And unfortunately, it's going to put them behind the sticks to begin this drive. Now, Nate, I played offensive line, and when we put on a hard count, a lot of times what happens is you don't jump first, but when the defense moves, they don't get the full start, right? They have to jump into the neutral zone. Correct. But if they jump, it causes you to kind of think, oh, no, I need to go too. And then the penalty ends up being on you. So I saw what you did bluffed and all kind of shifted and moved, but I think it was Delphus Jefferson that ended up drawing the penalty because of it. 
Agner going to call his own number, pull this one down, work to the right side. As he's going to pick up some good yardage on first down, gets back near the original line of scrimmage. And unfortunately, though, as Agner started to roll to that right side, there was a whole lot of white jerseys and no red ones to help him. Yeah, and a really good open field tackle there by Brody Anderson getting into the legs of Agner. That's a good runner. Carter Agner's got some good size, and he knows how to run the rock, and that's a good tackle to drop him for just five. And like you said, right at the original line of scrimmage, so it brings up second and ten. Agner alongside Tretman. We'll see them in the shotgun all afternoon long. Agner under immediate pressure, has to get rid of it quickly. Bluffton flying to the football. That one's down. The officials are going to say incomplete, though, as that might have been a fortunate call for the Wildcats. Yeah, and you could see right there, Landon Worcester saw that all the way. That's the All-State linebacker reading that play, noticing that there's an open man out in the flat. He took off. You could see him sprinting before that ball was even thrown, and he gets there as soon as it touches the receiver, and it's dropped for an incompletion. So big third down here for the Wildcats coming off of the fumble recovery. See if they're able to continue this drive. Three wide receivers coming towards the near sideline, one out wide. Aglitz going to drop, has to get turned, going to have to go deep. Going to be a jump ball as that was actually a pretty good ball. It just looked like that was number two, Jace Lindemann as he may have just gotten a little turned around on that one. He had a lot of room still left. As that was a pretty good ball by Agner. Yeah, it was. A good job by Eichis. He kind of dropped back. He, he know, knew they were going to try to go over to the top. And he jumped over, and he almost picked that ball off, but a good job knocking it away, and the Pirates hold strong here after the turnover. Presumably we'll get it back here on the punt. Punt is away. That Bluffton came for that one, almost able to get a hand on it, but a nice punt. It's going to get fielded around the 35-yard line. Going to return this one up right around the 50-yard line. That was Quinn Eaches on the return. And Bluffton, they're going to come back out for their third offensive possession. Last time, they really had no trouble moving the ball, Evan. They got down the field you know, in relative ease, and it was a big defensive stand by the Wildcat defense in the shadows of their own end zone that prevented the Pirates from getting into it. Yeah, and coming into today, only two turnovers for the Pirates, so not a team that turns the ball over often. And, and again, that was a really good play by the Jefferson defense, not giving Gieske anywhere to run or pass the ball. And so we'll see how they respond here. Again, you said it. They, didn't, they haven't had trouble moving the football. They just need to make sure to not turn it over. So we'll see what adjustments this Wildcat defense can make, see if they can't slow down the Pirate offense. Gieske takes the snap, going to drop back. As we have seen all night long, these quick, short passes where they've done a nice job with yards after catch. This time it was number six, Brody Anderson with the catch and run. That's going to be enough for a Lee Samus Recipe Chicken first down. And look, if those Jeff Cats DBs are going to give them that much space, they're just going to keep throwing it underneath. They're just going to keep chewing away again. Bluffton has athletes at most positions, right? And so when they throw the ball out, even if it's a five-yard pass and catch, they're still going to be able to make some guys miss and get up the field quickly, as you can see right there. Well, and that's what makes it so dangerous when you're trying to prevent that big play and you know what your opponent has and you're trying to take it away. Well, if they make the adjustment, they're like, that's fine. If they're going to take that away, we have another way that we can beat you. And right now, that's what we're seeing as this time it's Stackhouse as his defender fell, but we do have a flag on the field. We'll see what this one is. It looked like, and it's going to be an illegal man downfield. So a fortunate call for the Wildcats as that's going to bring this one back. As once again, it was just that quick, short pass and that Bluffton was just making something happen after the catch. Yeah, I'm not sure how an offensive lineman got that far downfield. The pass was quick, and it wasn't like it was an RPO where they're running out to pass or to run block. And so not, not too sure what happened there. We'll drop them back five yards. But again, a team that's moving the ball well. And like you said, you can see that one just underneath. The Pirates are content to just make those short completions and let guys work. So that is going to bring up first and 15 for the Pirates. Three minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Bluffton on top, 7-0. Scoring play belonged to Tate Gieske as he had a long touchdown pass on the opening drive of this game. Another pass, a slant right across the middle. 
Nice pickup as that's going to bring up a, a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down for the Pirates as they get the penalty yardage back and then some. It's Javen Crawfus with the catch. Nice little slant route. Like, uh, excuse me. Nice little slant route right again underneath the defense. And they're just taking those short passes and they're running for plenty of yards after catch. Two wide receivers out for the Pirates. Wooster in the backfield along with Gieske. Gieske going to hand this one off on. And just, I love the patient running right there of that, on that sweep, right? Noah Bricker, he wasn't in any hurry. He just let his, his offensive help come, get his blockers in front of him, didn't try to do too much, and through all that, ends up picking up about eight yards on that play. Right, and as good as Landon Worcester is at running the football, he's a really good blocker as well, right? A great lead blocker, and right there, Bricker knew that he was in front of him, and hey, if you're confident that the guy in front of you is going to make a block when he needs to, why not just stay behind him and wait for him to do so? I really like that play. It goes for nine yards. Second in short for the Pirates. Going to give this one to Stackhouse to a sweep on the other side. He's going to cut it back up to the inside. Going to race to the corner, and he is in. Griffin Stackhouse with a Lawnix Jewelry touchdown. And again, the athleticism. Stackhouse running to the outside and just makes one quick, sharp cut to make a man miss and then gets into the end zone. A really nice run there from Stackhouse and the Pirates close to doubling their lead here. Nothing fancy on that drive from the Pirates. A couple of short passes, yards after catch. A couple of sweeps, ends up in the end zone as they look to make this a 14-0 game. That's Stackhouse's first rushing touchdown of the year. He has two receiving touchdowns. First one on the ground as that one is up and good. I wish my golf shot looked like that, right? <laughs> Just a nice little loft. Actually, it's not an original thought. I heard someone else say that last week, but it is a really nice looking kick from Jackson Brown, also a soccer player for the Pirates. So Jackson Brown makes it 14 nothing. The Pirates are on top. We'll see if the Wildcats can respond when we return on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsors Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Our touchdown sponsor for today is Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. And our Red Zone sponsor for tonight is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Bluffton going to kick this one away to the Wildcats as they were able to get into the end zone after the Wildcat defense came up with a turnover on their previous trip. Low line drive, going to get fielded. Wildcats able to have a nice return there last time, looking for a little bit of space and ran out of room as that Bluffton defense came all over the place. Kellen Brotherwood tried to see if he couldn't stretch the field a little bit, get a few extra yardage, but the Pirates did a nice job of covering. Yeah, good job by the recovering team to, or excuse me, the defensive team staying in their lanes all the way down the field, not over pursuing and not letting find any room to run up the field. And so the defense comes back out. They've looked really nice so far tonight. 128 left to go here in the opening quarter. Bluffton with the 14-0 lead. Got to get out of the habit of saying tonight is a day game. Yeah, right. Got Middle the sun of the day out. here. Got a nice breeze as we sit here in the shade. A beautiful afternoon here in Delphus. It's Canal Days yeah. weekend. We may uh, talk a little bit more about that later in this one, but a big weekend here in Delphus. Agner gets rid of this one quickly, looking for the screen as that's going to go right through Brotherwood's hands. Going to be an incomplete pass as the Wildcats still looking for their first first down of this game. Their, their drives haven't looked bad. They've been able to move the ball on first, second, and third down, but they just haven't quite been able to get that last one or two yards. Yeah, and on that pass right there, it looked like if he would have caught that ball, he would have been dropped for a loss. So maybe good, a good drop there, saving a couple yards. Second and 10 for the Jeff Katz. Agner in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Going to look to go to the air. Going to get rid of this one. A great throw on, on a line as he's moving. They had to throw across his body and gets that, uh, excuse me, gets it completed to Parker Shade. 
And that is going to be enough for Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. Bluffton brought six that time, and a good job by Agner just rolling out into space and not letting that pressure get to him. Delivered a really nice ball and a really good catch going to the ground on the sideline, staying in bounds, and getting that first. Agner going to go to the air once again. Let's this one go on the far side as we're going to have a penalty as maybe it's going to be some holding this time. We'll see. They were looking for Jace Lindemann on that pass. All right. And that might go against Noah Bricker as Lindemann was double covered. But a pass interference call is going to give Delphus Jefferson another Lee Samus Recipe Chicken first down. And this Wildcat offense is moving the ball. Must have been a hand on his back because it looked like he was just trying to kind of fall backward to catch that pass that was behind him. You can see basically the whole Bluffton sideline confused at the call, but referee was right on it, threw that flag right away. And you like a referee that's confident with the call. Big gain. Agner looking to throw, gets chased off his line one more time, floats this one back over the middle. And it looked for a minute that Parker Shade was going to have a lot of room to run. But that Bluffton defense came flying to the ball and was taken down. I believe that was Looser that got to him and brought him to the ground quickly for just a short game. That's another really nice pass from Agner under duress. He ended up on his butt right there. He was wrapped up about as soon as he was throwing that ball, but still able to deliver it. And hey, a positive gain's nice no matter what on first down. That one goes for three. Second and seven for the Wildcats. Four wide receivers for Agner who has done all of his damage to the air here on this drive. Going to look to throw one more time. As that is a great read, good timing by Bricker as he was able to time that up perfectly to make sure that Lucas Millmine did not come up with that completion. Yeah, really nice job from Bricker there. One or maybe even half a second sooner, he's going to get called for a pass interference. And I think he was the guilty party on the last pass interference. So good for him knocking that ball away. No penalty and a third and long now for the Jeff Cats. 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. So, I'm sorry, the first quarter. Evan, you a little surprised that we're seeing Jefferson go to the air so much here in this quarter? A little bit, but again, it's kind of worked, right? We've seen a, a couple open receivers that haven't been hit. In this drive, we've seen two good completions from Agner. Going to go to the air once again. Here it comes, it's trying to set up the screen. And this one is going to get knocked down as they're just playing through that whistle on that one. They had the screen set up. That looked like it was going to be set up for a big play. They could have completed it. Nice job by that D-line for the Pirates to knock that one to the turf. You're absolutely right. There was a lot of space for the running back to catch that ball and move. If the Pirates wouldn't have gotten a hand on that, likely it would have been close to a first down, if not even bigger than that. So the Wildcat punt team coming out yet again. They're going to send this one away on fourth and seven. They're on their own side of the 50. Thought maybe there might have been a conversation about going for it, but deciding to play the field position game this time. This one, a high drive, is going to take a pirate bounce back up to about the 24-yard line, and that will be down. And we'll see Bluffton come back out with five seconds left to go here in the quarter. Yeah, and, and again, when you're when you're close to the 50 and it's fourth down, you always think about going for it. But when you're playing against a team like Bluffton that is just pounding the ball and doing a really nice job moving it. You almost think about, okay, we're only down 14. Let's not give them good field position. Let's try to win the field position battle. Although the Pirates have started from this spot and still not had much Well, you wonder, moving. too, if they remember, you know, last week, not a lot that went right for the Wildcats in that game against Paulding. But the, one of the bright spots was the punting game. In, and I mean that in the fact that their punts were really good. They actually pinned Paulding very deep inside the five a couple of times, mm -hmm. and that led to a safety. So maybe that's also playing in their minds like, hey, listen, let's if we can get it, some good punts off, we can get them down there, maybe we can get some points that way as well. Not this time, though, as Bluffton is going to begin on the 23-yard line. Gieske going to call it himself right up the middle. He's going to get taken down by number 67, Tanner Hetrick. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. It is 14-0 here at Champions Field. The Pirates are on top, and they're driving. We'll step aside and be back with the second quarter here on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 
premier sponsor tonight for the Bluffton Pirates is Springfield Fireworks. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. They are open seven days a week, nine to eight. The Bluffton Pirates coming out here as they look to continue their drive to begin the second quarter. And the first quarter really was all the Pirates as they had two scoring drives, a third drive that looked like it was going to result in a scoring one before a great defensive stand by the Wildcats. But right now the Pirates doing pretty much just about anything they want on offense as the Wildcats are trying to adjust, trying to make um, some stops here to see if they can not hold them. But right now, this Bluffton team is looking very, very good. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what they do, right? They're going off tackle, they're getting plenty of yards. Going outside, they're doing well. A couple quarterback keepers that have gone long, including that 75-yard touchdown run from Gieske on the third play of the game. So tough to stop a team that can do a whole lot on offense. Here's Gieske in the shotgun. Going to go to the air. Going to look to go deep. He has a man open as he got behind everybody. That Stackhouse, Stackhouse is going to take it in for a Laudix Jeweler for a touchdown. Just a sophomore, folks, but that is a veteran pass right there. His defender hadn't even gotten behind the defense yet, but he noticed the speed difference, noticed the advantage that he had, so he just floated it up behind the defense. Le leads him perfectly right in the bread basket. Everything you want from a quarterback. A great job by Stackhouse bringing it in and finishing the play, and the Pirates strike quickly in the second quarter. And that was all set up by those short passes that we saw in the first quarter by the Pirates as Jefferson had to start trying to make adjustments to those. Bluffton decided to pick their spot. They picked it well, and it ends up in a Lonix Jeweler touchdown. And now it is going to be Brown out for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. Just underway here in the second quarter. Bluffton on top, 21-0. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Lonix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lonix.com. Our red zone sponsor tonight is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Nate, while I was doing my prep for this game, something really stood out to me, something I don't think I've seen before. I know it's a small sample size. It's only three games. But looking at the Delphus Jefferson stats, offensively and defensively, they are super even. Listen to this. Delphus Jefferson on offense averages 246 yards per game. Opponents average 247. Rushing yards per game, they average 124.3. Opponents, 124.3. <laughs> In average passing yards per game, Delphus Jefferson 121.7, opponents 122.7. The fact that those numbers are as close as they are is actually incredible. I've not seen that before. It really is. As you see, Kellen Brotherwood able to field that, uh, field that kickoff and bring it back up to about the 28-yard line where the Wildcats will take over on offense. Evan, last time that the Wildcats were on the field, the offense got going. They got things going through the air. They get stalled out, but it has to be positive for them knowing, hey, listen, we have a game plan that will work. There are going to be spots in this defense we can take advantage of. They just have to be a little bit more consistent. You're always looking on, looking for things to build on, and I think Agner started to complete some passes. He's looking comfortable under pressure. And so, yeah, absolutely, I think there's some stuff that they can see on that last drive that they might look to go to here. Agner going to go back to the air. No, he's going to pull this down. Quarterback draw all the way. Bluffton right there to read it, and Agner is going to get taken down for a loss on first down. We are just underway here in the second quarter. Our quarter sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. That time the Pirates brought pressure from the right side, and the play was designed to go to their left, Delphus Jefferson's right. But again, you see the athleticism and the, the, the way the Bluffton Pirates fly to the football. Not a lot of guys over there at first, but all of a sudden there they are to drop him for a loss of two. Make it three, excuse me. Agner looks quickly to try to get rid of this one. Nice, strong throw. 
As Luke Rohde was the recipient of that catch, that's going to be enough for a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. And listen, when Carter Agner can set his feet and let one go, he has a very strong arm. He is very accurate. Right now, the trouble has been getting him to be able to plant his feet as that Bluffton line has been all over him. But he has looked really good when he has been able to do it. Yeah, I really like the way he that ball came out of his hand. He really zipped it. Like you said, he's able to plant that front foot, really throw through the football. It's a good pass, but you're right. They need to give him some more time so he can open up a little bit more. Here comes the blitz as that one was blown up right from the beginning as a fantastic job. I believe that was Bricker who timed it perfectly, went right in between the tackles and disrupted that handoff and able to get that fumble. All right, so we talk about programs, you talk about values, unselfishness oozes from this Bluffton team. And here's what I mean, right there, not many people around Ethan Coli, right? A lot of times you see young guys try to pick that ball up and run into the end zone. You see the end zone, you see all that space in front of you. But instead of doing that, he just falls on the football to make sure his team gets possession. It's not about him, it's about the team. And you love to see that from a guy. We start talking about this Wildcat team, and this is a very young team. They only have, uh, I believe, five or six seniors that get at least uh, at least start on both sides of the ball. As a long pass going to Stackhouse, Stackhouse in double coverage, not able to come up with that one. So there's still a lot of learning on the fly. There's a lot of sophomores out there playing today that they're going to get contributions from a lot of young guys. And sometimes those learning curves are just a part of the game. And I think that's what you kind of saw there on that fumble was you could see the blitz coming. You knew that it was going to be there. And everything got a little bit rushed for Delphus Jefferson. And that led to that turnover. Yeah, no question. And, and like you said, there's going to be growing pains when, when you have a young team, especially when you're up against a team like Bluffton, 9-1 and one a year ago, bring back a lot of their offensive line. Uh, certainly a really good team, right? It's going to be tough. You're, you're going to have to take some lumps. This time they're going to keep it on the ground. Nice job moving through traffic, getting to the outside before he gets tripped up. As that is Parker Lovell. It's a good run by Lovell. I like the tackle there by Brotherwood, though. Nice open field tackle, getting into the legs of a really good running back. That is going to be another Lee Famous Recipe Chicken. A first down for the Bluffton Pirates. And our premier sponsor for Bluffton is Springfield Fireworks. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week, 9 to 8. 9.28 left to go here in the half. As you see the Pirates working inside the Pat Stonis and Cream Red Zone. They get inside the 10-yard line on that carry. Going to bring up... Be second in probably about four yards left on this one. That time it's Worcester just finding the hole, putting his head down. Nice hard run. It's not fun to tackle a guy like that, right? No. A guy that's not afraid to just run through you. And right there, an example of him not being afraid of contact and just getting those extra yards by getting that shoulder down and using his strength. Gieske waits on the snap, has two wide receivers. He's going to swing this one out to level, level. Going to go right up off tackle as he's going to get taken down short of the first down, but there is a flag on the play. Use and is it going to be an illegal shift? Yeah, that far line judge called the illegal procedure. Illegal. I didn't see it, but hey, look, yep. there's a lot of motion before the play in Bluffton's offense, and sometimes that'll happen, right? A tight end moves a little bit soon, or a wide receiver goes early while someone else is in motion, and they'll see it and they'll call it. And this is about the area of the field on the other side that we saw where Delphus's defense came up big and forced the fumble. So second and long here, we'll see if the Wildcats can't get back on top and have that defense create another turnover. Eight thirty and counting, second and nine, balls on the 14 yard line. Geese. Gonna go to the air. Has some time down there. He's able to connect on a crossing route as he gets that into the hands of number nine, Quinn Eaches. And we're going to have a timeout on the field. So that's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take it as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 
And a timeout on the field as Bluffton looks to put this one in the end zone. They're going to swing it out right, out wide, and they get in as this is Wooster as he just snuck it inside the uh, that corner pylon, and he's going to extend this lead out to 27 to nothing pending the extra point. See the Bluffton Pirate offense not doing a whole lot, um, nothing fancy that time at least. Just wanting to stretch the field, see if they can't get the defense out of position. And a hard run that time by Wooster ends up in the end zone. So now Brown out for the extra point. Looking to make this a 28 to nothing game. Kick is up and it is good. The Bluffton Pirates out to the big lead here in the second quarter. They're on top, 28-0. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. The Bluffton Pirates put in another Laudix Jewelry touchdown to make it 28-0, 7.51 left to go in this one. And kick this one away as this is going to go over Delphus, uh, the Delphus returner's head and out through the back of the end zone. Results in a touchback as the Wildcats will bring this one out. They're going to get started at the 20-yard line. So far, the Wildcat offense, they have shown that they can move the ball pretty consistently as far as first, second down. They've got some positive things going through the air but it's been those big third downs or the turnovers that have really stopped any kind of momentum that Jefferson has tried to gain. Agner, a big, strong quarterback back there, has done a nice job uh, when he gets pushed off of his marks, trying to keep plays alive. We've seen the kind of power and strength he has in his throws, as the Wildcats are going to need him to have a few more of those here this afternoon. Agner going to roll once again. They're going to send this one, and this one's going to be picked off as the blitz was coming up right through the middle. Agner tried to get rid of it quickly. Some miscommunication as the receiver never turned around. And that is going to result in another turnover for this Bluffton Pirate defense as that is now back-to-back -back turnovers after they got the fumble recovery last time, and this time it is the interception. Bluffton coming off of a just a fantastic season last year where it was really them and Grove, the class of the NWC. Coming into this season, they had graduated a lot. I think there were some questions about whether or not Bluffton was going to be able to replicate the kind of success that they had last year. And at least through the first three and a half games so far, all those questions have been answered and then some as they have just continued to look like a dominant offensive force. The defense has been absolutely incredible only given up scores in one of their games so far as they are trying to see if they can't at, they they don't want to just replicate let's put it that way it's not trying to have the same type of season that they had last year they, they want to have a better one they want to move farther through the playoffs and they know that these games here early in the season help set the tone for that 7-10 and counting here in the half they're going to hand this one off up the middle this is level and he bounces off a couple of tacklers, and he's going to carry this one inside the 20, as that's going to be another trip to the Pats Donuts and Cream Red Zone. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Clock continuing to click down here as we get ever closer to halftime. Bluffton faces a third and three. From the 18-yard line, Giese takes the snap. Going to hand this one off. Level. Started outside, goes right up the middle, and he just keeps them legs churning and churning until he's finally taken down at the 10-yard line. That's going to be good enough for a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. This is going to be first and 10 at the 10. So it's actually first and goal for the Bluffton Pirates. Easy takes the snap. 
Going to go to the air, decides to pull it down. No, excuse me, handoff even tricked me. Was a great read that time as it looked like that was going to be an RPO that he pulled back and actually he let that one go. He did a nice job of continuing to play and that was enough to freeze the defense as well as they pick up nine on that first down and they are knocking on the doorsteps of another Lonick Jewelry touchdown. Been very impressed what we've, with what we have seen out of the Pirates as they don't seem in any hurry. They're very under controlled. They're taking their time. Now you see this jumbo package come out. They're going to hand this one up right up the middle. And that is going to be another Laudix Jewelry touchdown as the Pirates go on top 34 to nothing on the back of Landon Wooster as Wooster punches that one in. 522 left to go in this one now as we've seen the Pirates have the short field their last two offensive possessions and they've been able to make good on that as they've gotten both into the end zone. Brown comes out, gets ready to send the extra point up. Here comes the snap, it's down, kick is up, and it is good. The Bluffton Pirates go on top at 35 to nothing. We'll step aside once again and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years in off with offices excuse me, in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Logix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Logix.com. Pirates are going to send this one back. This time it is going to be fielded as that is Lucas Milmai looking for a little bit of space. Flags all over the field, though. Nice little juke move to give himself a little bit of extra space. A nice return as he carries this one out to about the 22-yard line. And that is where the Wildcats, at least for now, will begin this drive. We'll see what the laundry on the field means. See if either Delphus will get a few more yards or if they have to back it up a little bit. You know, it's going to be important on this drive. I think if you're the, the Jeff Cats, just to try to come out here and, and try to get some positive things going. We've seen them get things done through the air. They've had some success. Agner has done a nice job when he's gotten some time. That offensive line of Delphus has just got to step up a little bit here. It's hot. I, I know they've had a long day so far, and it's a lot easier said than done to block that front seven of the Pirates. But they're going to have to, as you do see that penalty goes against the Jeff Cats. They're going to have to walk this one back to the 10-yard line. So now an even longer field for the Jeff Cats with 5-12 left to go. And the last two have ended in turnovers. I think right now the Jeff Cats just want to be able to hang on to the football. Bluffton shows blitz yet again. This time, Agner sees it. Just going to go right up the middle. A great carry on first down. A lot of contact towards the end of that one as Agner with a tough run picks up a Lee's famous recipe chicken first down as he gets that ball out to the 25-yard line. I think that was a great adjustment by the coaching staff of Delphus Jefferson there as the blitz was going to keep coming from the Pirates until Jefferson did something about it. That time they drew up the read for Agner just to be able to carry it right up the middle that he does they pick up a big first down and now they're on the move Agner gonna go to the air yet again gonna go looks to go to the sideline had a receiver and just out of his reach as he was trying to connect with Luke Rohde that was a timing route as you saw Luke Rohde as he was getting to the sideline hadn't turned his head yet Agner just knew where he was supposed to be when he let that one go and they were just a little bit off from what could have been a big game for the Wildcats. If Agner leads him up the sideline, there's a chance Rody could take that one into the end zone. Second and 10, ball on the 25. Wildcats still plenty of time here in the half to try to see if they can't get some points on the board. Here comes a blitz right up the middle yet again, another fumble. As I think right now, it's just a little bit of the jitters from the Wildcats as they lose another one. This is three straight possessions that have ended in turnovers. And they see the blitz. They know that it's coming from the Pirates, and they don't have the extra help on that side. And you can see the guys in the backfield, I think they're just trying to speed things up a little bit too much, trying to make sure that that blitz doesn't cause disruption. 
But by doing that, they're causing their own disruption. They're fumbling with the snaps and the handoffs, and that has led to two fumbles and an interception. So a short field yet again for the Pirates, already on top, 35-0, as Giese will march his offense out yet again. Giese takes the snap, going to go to the air, going to throw. They're looking for the big play as they were looking for the wheel route that time on a shorter route. That one was meant to go to, I believe that was Lovell. Just over the outstretched arms of Parker. as They look like they had the play design they wanted because if he was able to bring that in, I don't think the DB had turned yet. I don't think he'd have seen him gather in that completion. That does stop the clock, though, so on the plus side, if you're Jefferson, the clock's not winding down here. It still gives you an opportunity here in the second half. A late substitution. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Too many men on the field for the Wildcats. But prior to the flag coming out, Delphus Jefferson takes the timeout. We'll take the Metzger Services or Financial Services timeout as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Giese is able to roll out of trouble, and he finds his receiver on the far sideline at Stackhouse, walks into the end zone for another Lonix Jewelry, a touchdown, as that was all done by Giese that time as he was able to get out of trouble, get out to the open, and find his receiver as the Wildcat defense had done a nice job there. They had gotten pressure on him and got him off his spot, but Stackhouse got loose, and he ends up putting another six on the boards for the Pirates. Brown's been busy so far here in the first half as he comes out for yet another extra point, looking to make it 42 to nothing. Waits for the snap. It's back, it's down, kick is up, and this one is good. 4.02 left to go here in the half. The Pirates on top, 42 to nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency serving Allen, Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Touchdown sponsor tonight is Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. I'd also like to thank tonight's premier sponsor for Bluffton, Springfield Fireworks. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week, 9 to 8. Pirates kicking this one off yet again to the Wildcats. Brotherwood able to field this one. Looks to go towards the middle of the field. Tried to bounce it outside, and he is stopped immediately as he took a hard hit that time. He's a little slow coming up. They're going to go and check on him as it looks like he might be okay. So we'll wait a second here, see if they're going to – and they are. They're going to go out and check on him. So while they do that, we'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Kellen Brotherwood able to walk off the field in his own power. Glad to see he's okay. He just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit, so it looks like he'll, he'll be all right. Wildcats come out. They find themselves down 42 to nothing, under four left to go here in the first half, where the offense hasn't looked bad. It's just right now holding on to the football. That front part or the front, front line of Bluffton has just caused a lot of problems in the backfield, led to three consecutive turnovers. And we'll see if the Wildcats can hold on to the football here. They're going to swing this one out to Trentman. Trentman is met immediately by Bricker and taken down for a loss of one. As Bricker did a great job of reading that one all the way. Dean Trentman, not a lot of room to make anything happen once he caught that one. It's going to bring up second and 11 for the Wildcats. Clock continuing to count down. 3.30 left to go. Ball on the 23-yard line. Agner with four wide receivers. 
Trentman, Trentman to his left. Here comes the blitz yet again. They get through. They read the screen this time as that was blown up from the very beginning as Delphus just trying to see if they couldn't get a high percentage throw, maybe be able to break one with some blocks. As you saw the blitz coming in, great recognition by the Pirates as you saw the defender just put the brakes on, change course as they snuffed that one out for a big loss. And that'll bring up third and I believe it's going to be about 17, 18. Agner waits on the snap. Here comes the pressure off the edge. They're just going to throw this one deep as he had no time as his receivers were trying to run out. But because of that pressure coming off of both sides, he had to get rid of that one quickly. And that falls harmlessly to the turf and will lead to another Jefferson punt. You can see right now the Wildcats just looking for answers as this Bluffton Pirate team has looked incredibly good here this afternoon. Some frustration, and it, it's hard to blame them. As the Jeff Cats just right now can't quite seem to find the answer as they try to get some things going here against the Pirates. Carter Agner, he is the punter for this Wildcat team as they have to burn a timeout before they didn't want to have to lose any more yardage before the play clock wind down. So the Wildcats take the Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will as well, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Agner waits to send this punt off. Not a good punt as he got that one off the side of his foot as that is going to bounce inside the 30 before it is going to be downed at the 31-yard line. And right now, not a lot going right for the Jeff Cats. We've seen Agner have some really good punts here this afternoon, but he had space and wasn't under any pressure. Just sometimes that ball, if, you're not hit, if you don't hit it just right, it's going to take a bad uh, kick on you. And I think that's what happened there. 2.19 left to go here in the half. The Pirates come out as this will be the fourth straight possession where they have had a short field as they are going to take over on the 30-yard line. Gisi still in the game. He's going to be back with an empty backfield, three wide receivers. Gisi going to get rid of this one quickly. As this is just a quick screen, leads him wide open out into the middle of the field, working through traffic and into the end zone for a Lonix Drooler touchdown. Great job by Brody Anderson. As Anderson that time just took a quick screen pass, went right back through the middle of the field, had the defense going one way, he went the other, and it ends up with another trip into the end zone. Brown comes out as he'll have another extra point try for the Pirates. Still 2.06 left to go here in the half where the last four touchdowns from the Pirates have all come in very short play time. I believe it's all been under the last uh, or five minutes left to play as this one goes up and it is good as well to make it 49 to nothing. Pirates on top. It's all bluffed in Pirates here right now as the Wildcats looking for answers. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's first downs are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpunk, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Our Red Zone sponsor tonight is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Bluffton Pirates kickoff team is out, waiting to send this one down to... Brotherwood and a mill mine waiting deep. Brown's kick going to be fielded by Millmine. 
Milmine with a little bit of space. Going to have to make a man miss, and he does. Nice job moving through some traffic. Gets this one out to the 25-yard line as Carter Agner will lead the Jeff Cat offense once again with 157 left to go here in the half. So we'll see what the Wildcats can go. Right now, I think the, the big key that they have to try to focus on is finding a way of slowing down the splits of Bluffton. If Bluffton is going to continue to send guys through the gaps, Jefferson has to find a way to slow them down. That is what has led to all of these turnovers that we've seen here in the back part of this second quarter and really what has led to this offensive explosion for the Pirates. First and 10, ball on the 25. Four wide receivers for Agner. Carter in the shotgun. Here comes the extra help once again. He's just going to keep it himself. Works off the left side, makes a two-man miss. Going to go to the sideline yet again, but not before a, another flag comes out onto the field. And this one may not be a good call for the Wildcats. And it's going to be a block in the back against Jefferson. So right now, Jefferson just not having the best of luck, even when things look like maybe they're going to go good for them. They have the good play design. Penalties have been calling them back. And now they're going to have to replay first down with the extra 10 yards. First and 20, ball on the 15. 145 left to go here in the half with Bluffton on top. 49 nothing on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Agner waits on the snap. You can see the blitz coming. Jefferson tried to pick it up. You see Trentman spin out of trouble. Tried to stiff arm another guy, but he is going to be dragged down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a one-yard gain. As right now, that bluffed in defensive front is just too much for Jefferson to handle. They're getting into the backfield and causing all sorts of issues right now. It's going to be second and 24. Or actually, so instead of getting back to the line of scrimmage, it actually was a four-yard loss. Under a minute left to go here in the half. As I would think Jefferson right now just wants to make sure they don't turn the ball over. They do not want to give Bluffton another opportunity to put points on the board before halftime. This one gets stuffed out quickly for another loss. Going to bring up third down. And I'd imagine that that is going to take us into the locker room as Jefferson doesn't have to run another play if they don't want to. It'll be third and 26 from the nine-yard line. 15 seconds left to go on the scoreboard. 18 seconds left to go on the game clock. And that is going to do it. Both teams are going to head to the locker room. The Bluffton Pirates in control here at Champions Field. They're on top, 49 to nothing. We'll step aside and be back with the third quarter on WOSA. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Our first downs tonight are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. Welcome back to Champions Field here at Stadium Park on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Delphus, Ohio. I'm Nick Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. And Evan, not a lot went right in the first half. There's really no way to kind of get around that if you're the Wildcats. But there were stretches where if you can find ways of building on that consistency, we saw them do some good things in the air. They did have some drives, unfortunately, that it was turnovers or penalties kind of slowed down. If you can find some ways to build some consistency, you can get some positive things going here in the second half. 
Well, you certainly don't want to roll over, right? You, you need to come out and you need to uh, try to establish some momentum, right? I know they've tried a lot. They've tried to go outside. They've tried to run inside. They tried some screens and just nothing has been working. But you want to try to find that one thing that will work in this game and try to just find that momentum. And at least when you leave this game, look at look back and say, hey, here are some things that we did well, right? So we'll see what happens here. Looks like the starters for both teams are still out there. Just underway here in the third quarter, our quarter sponsor, Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Quick one out to the near sideline. That was Luke Rohde with the reception. Get some positive yards on first down. I like that play. Quick swing pass to the outside. Just get your guy in some space. Pirates a little slow to get out there, so a nice five-yard gain on first down. And if you're Jefferson, right, that kind of has to be the mentality is, hey, let's see if we can't do something quickly before Bluffton gets a chance to kind of wake up or get back into this quarter, see if maybe they can't catch them lacking a little bit. Yeah, no question. We are in a running clock here with Bluffton on top, 49 to nothing. So the clock will continue to run unless this lead drops below 30. As that one was a dangerous pass. Nice timing. Luke Rohde does catch that one, but it's going to be for a loss as Bluffton had that red pretty well. That long throw to that outside always kind of makes you hold your breath if you're a coach. Yeah, and you got to make those passes a little bit quicker. That ball has to come out basically right away. Don't wait for your guy to get set. You know he's going to turn around. You got to get it out there quick because you saw on that, on that play, Agner waited just a little bit before he threw that ball out there, and the Pirates read it and were able to make a play really quickly. Third and seven ball in the 23-yard line. Agner in the shotgun, along with Dean Tretman. Agner going to roll out. Looks to throw it out deep. He has a man open, but too much as that is a hard ball to try to control as you are running away, have to throw across your body deep. It was a nice job as the Jefferson Wildcats had an opportunity there as they had, that was Jace Lindemann had gotten behind the defense, but unfortunately for the Wildcats, they couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, a little miscommunication in the Pirate defensive backfield as the safety over the top came up to defend the mid-level, and that deep ball, or that deep receiver was open, like you said, but a good pressure from the Pirates forcing Agner to throw on the run, and it's a little bit tough when you're throwing on the run, as you can see right there. Oh, it's going to be three and out on the opening possession for the Wildcats as punt is away. And take a Wildcat bounce inside the 35-yard line, finally down right around the 34. And that is where Bluffton will come out for their first offensive possession here of the half. Well, you talked about Agner and the way he can punt. That was a 51-yard punt right there. Nice spiraling kick, kept it away from the returner, so he's able to get a little roll with it as well. I really like what he was able to do there. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Bluffton Pirates is Springfield Fireworks. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. They are open seven days a week, nine to eight. Geesey. And sure actually, no, it. they do. Yep. Miller switch at quarterback. quarterback. Now, listen, he's also a sophomore, but this guy can sling it too. If he gets a, a chance to set his feet, watch his ball. This guy can throw. Yeah, hand this one on up the middle. As that is Lovell. So, Nate, I actually have a question for you. I've had a conversation with some folks in, in Bluffton. Uh, you know, Bluffton this season has gotten out to really big leads, and some people look at the scores and they think, are they running it up? What, what's going on here? Look, I, I, so here's the question. You're a coach, and you're, you have a team that is, is very good and often up by quite a bit at halftime. And people often say, when do you go to your subs? Okay, my question for you is this. If your team is constantly up by that much and you're taking your subs out at halftime, is it right for them? You get five weeks in, and they have played half the amount of football than their opponents. Is that fair to your players? I mean, I think it's a it's a tricky situation if you're a coach because you can see right there, right, like why you want to give your backups a lot of time because this is a long season, and you never know. We have seen injuries, unfortunately, all over the place to begin this season. A, a lot of really high-profile players have are out right now due to injury and you see teams that that are reeling because they don't have the depth to kind of replace those guys so you have this great opportunity to build that depth right but what you do as well is as you bring in a your backup quarterback here he's still throwing to some of your starters you see a high pass there kind of leaves those guys out on a limb however if you're balancing the sportsmanship aspect of it, right, where it's we don't want to run the score up and we don't want to do this, we don't want to do that, 
it, it, it's a tough spot because you also know that at some point you're going to be in a game. Not everything's going to be blowout wins at halftime where you can get lots of time for your backups. And how are you going to can get your guys conditioned to play a full football game if they only are playing two quarters? So it, yep, it becomes exactly. a really weird balance of trying to figure out a way to build your depth while making sure that your starters are still getting the quality time that they need. Because that's the other part. You don't want your guys out there getting bad habits because, you know, they get into parts of the games where now maybe the other team's also putting some of their backup guys in to try some things. So, I, you know, I always think that it's a difficult thing. As long as – my opinion has always been that as long as the winning team isn't out here trying to throw 15, 20-yard, you know, downfield streaks when they're up 60 – I think pretty much anything other than those types of plays, are, are, they're all fair game sure. at that point. Sure, yeah, as long as, to me, same, same thing, right? As long as you're respecting your opponent in the midst of playing however you want to play, I think you're all right. And yeah, I think the rule of thumb generally that I've seen is you kind of give your starters maybe half the third quarter if you're up by a lot and then take them out. But as we've seen here, Bluffton's gone to their backup quarterback. And a nice run there to start the drive from the Jeff Cats. And Agner does a nice job as he picks up a Lee's famous recipe chicken first down. A fake pitch that time that he just kept himself, worked through some traffic as he picks up a nice first down. 5.14 left to go here in the corner with the clock running. Now you do have a lot of the second team defense out there for Bluffton. Quarterback Leighton Miller over at cornerback on the near side. Agner back in the shotgun, waits for the snap. Going to hand this one off to Trentman up the middle. Trentman drags along a couple of defenders with him, and he picks up a hard-fought hard three yards. Good job by the interior of the defensive line. Austin Scherger in there on the bottom of the pile for the tackle. It's going to bring up second and seven. For the Wildcats here, ball on the 28. See Lindemann coming in with the play for the Wildcats. I like that they're taking their time, right? I, I like that they're trying to stay gathered, stay grouped together. You know, make sure you're all on the same page. Again, we're just trying to get that momentum back, right? Get some things that you can look at that you've done well in this game. Agner gonna take the option, pulls that one back himself as he takes on three or four different Bluffton defenders, drags them along for a hard fought three yards. Yeah, nice job pulling that one out, just getting a couple yards, third down and five, maybe six coming up here. I can't count, Nate. <laughs> it's fine. You know, it's, it's all right. We got a big, gigantic scoreboard down in the end zone that I continually use as my little cheat code to, <laughs> to see where we're at, so it's okay. Third and five, ball in the 31. Wildcats looking to keep this drive alive as the clock continues to tick down here in the third quarter. Pressure coming from the Pirates. Trentman bounces it outside, looking to make one guy miss. He's going to get taken down, and I believe that's going to be just short of the first down marker. And we'll see what the Wildcats want to do here. I mean, this part of the field, typically you would say the smart call, right? the percentages are you want to punt. But in a game where you're just trying to work on things right now and the score it looks as lopsided as it does, you know, hey, listen, we don't know when in this season we may be at a fourth and one in this position and need to go for it. So yeah. let's see what play we can try to rely on here. That's a great point. You don't gain anything from punting this ball away either. So I like that. Also, I want to mention that's a great open field tackle by Blaine Hill on the far side on that last play. Good job. The Pirates blitzed up the middle and they bounced it to the outside and picked up a nice gain. Here's Agner going to roll out off his spot one more time, looking to go to the air, going to have to get rid of it. Does. Nice job extending that play as he is able to get that one completed as that goes to number 24, as that is Parker Shade. I like the way Agner throws under pressure, man. He is not afraid to take a hit. He's got good size, obviously, which makes it easier. But we've seen multiple times tonight, he's got a guy in his face and he delivers a nice, accurate pass. That one no different. He found himself on the turf, but threw it right into the gut of his receiver. So thanks to Elise, famous recipe chicken, first down. The Wildcats find themselves with a fresh set of downs. 
Agner going to go to the air once again. Here comes the pressure. Wildcats pick it up. Agner steps up, has one more guy. He has to just run through, and he loses the football. As the Wildcats are able to jump on that one, and that right there is pretty much the story of what happened in the second quarter as the Wildcats just had a very difficult time holding on to the football. And that was Blaine Hill once again on the tackle and the forced fumble. Good job being heads up by the offensive line, falling on top of it. It didn't get the number of the guy that recovered it, but either way, Jeff Katz keep the ball. They do gain a yard on the play, too. It's going to bring up second and nine for the Wildcats. Agner gets everybody set. Going to drop back yet again. Here comes the pressure. Going to have to let this one go. And some more miscommunication. Not sure if that was meant for Rody or for Lindemann as they had a crossing pattern there. But either one, either way, it went um, out, out of range of both of those players, unfortunately. Falls to the turf incomplete. Good pressure there by Bluff. And that was Braylon Scherger getting into the backfield and forcing that tough pass over the top. 35 seconds left to go here in the third quarter as the Wildcats are going to have to snap this one unless they reset the play clock as this one is winding down. They're going to have to hurry. If they want to avoid the penalty. They hurry up to the line. Three, two. They get the snap just off as Trentman takes the pitch, has to reverse course, goes up the middle, only picks up about two yards as that is going to bring up a third and long for the Wildcats, but not before the third quarter comes to a close. Bluffton on top, 49 to nothing. We'll step aside and be back with the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Also like to thank tonight's Red Zone sponsor, Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road at next to LCC, open daily. Big fourth down here for the Wildcats, just underway in the fourth quarter. Agner waits to snap, and we're going to have a whistle prior as I believe we're going to have a false start on the Wildcats, and we are, so we're going to go back five more yards. And now, it away. Yeah, now the Wildcats change their mind, and they are going to go ahead and punt this one away. Tonight's quarter sponsor, Citizens National Bank. Citizens National Bank, see how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. So with that penalty, the Wildcats decide just to pump this one away, not want to risk giving it back to the Pirates in short field. Nice punt by Agner. This one's going to take a Delphus Jefferson bounce, get inside the 20-yard line before it goes out of bounds. It's another 50-yard punt. Really good leg on Agner. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I think his average is tonight is going to get a little skewed because of the uh, – I think he had one earlier there in that first half that maybe only went maybe 15, 15 yards yep, or more. It, right. it was a, a miss hit. And they've had turnovers that have kind of ended their other drive. So he's had two great punts, two 50-plus uh, yarders, and then a couple that uh, you know he's not going to be too thrilled about when he looks at the tape. So the Pirates come back out on offense. As you mentioned, they have a change at quarterback. Number 10, Leighton Miller, is out there. The level's still in the backfield. Going to hand this one off on a sweep. Gets into the hands of number 15, Robbie Taylor. Taylor, he's going to reverse field and gets up and picks up nice yardage to get a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down for the Pirates. And look, we talk about the Bluffton athletes, right? And, we, and we've seen plenty of different guys get carries. That's the first time I remember seeing Robbie Taylor get a carry. Do you see the way he switched fields like that? Yeah. Like that's just, another athlete. Yeah, just put his foot in the ground they, and back the other way like he's been doing this every Friday night. Exactly. They get the ball in space and their players make a play. And it's a great job by Robbie Taylor finding the space and getting up field. First and 10, ball on the 36. Miller has an empty backfield. He's going to throw this one. And a double catch that one did Blaine Hill, but it pulls it in. And he gets taken down after a pickup of about eight. 
Nice quick pass. Again, we saw a lot of those in the first couple drives from Bluffton as Jefferson was giving them plenty of space, sagging back, and Bluffton just taking what they give them, three, four-yard passes, let those guys get into space, and nice job by Hill catching that and turning around. He almost dropped it, but either way, goes for a nice pickup of eight on first down. Now the playbook wide open on second. You mentioned Miller. He's a sophomore. He has a very strong arm. He can throw the ball around. And as you can see, they're not afraid to let him do it. This time, though, he's going to call his own number right up the middle. Works to that right side. Going to work for the edge. Going to go up the sideline. Inside the 20 has one guy to make miss. And he's going to get pulled down right around the five-yard line. A great open field tackle by number 15, Nelson Miller. As Miller was the only man that stood between Leighton Miller and a touchdown. Yeah, it's a good tackle. The only thing on that play that Bluffton could have done differently is when you're lead blocking like that down the sideline, instead of pushing someone toward where your guy is running, you can just get in his way, right? That lead blocker, just kind of step in front of your step in front of the guy and just make a lane for your runner to run through. And it could have been a touchdown, but either way, a really nice job by Miller. So now the Bluffton Pirates inside the pass Anderson Cream red zone. They're going to hand it off to number 17, Jackson Bolus. Bolus works back up through the middle of the field before he's taken down. It looks like maybe a gain of one at most. Going to bring up second and goal for Bluffton. Also a couple more in on that last stop. There's going to be no gain. Second goal. Yeah, Kind of a new look Northwest Conference this year, Nate. Some shifting and Ada leaves, Lipsick leaves, LCC comes in, Fort Loramie comes in on the football side, and conference just looks a little bit different than it used to. Man, this is opening weekend for the NWC as well as uh, they were the last conference as Bolas gets drugged down for a loss there on second. But NWC was the last conference to get their conference play underway. And it was a, a big one. A lot of a uh, lot of good scores over this weekend for the NWC. And you know, it looks like right now at first glance, you're looking at Bluffton Grove, LCC up towards the top. Um, Grove is just playing phenomenal right now. You know, everybody kind of wondered how they were going to respond to the loss of Landon Best for the season, and they responded just fine as they typically do, as they had a big win this weekend. Just a really well-coached team over there in Columbus Grove. Andy Schaefer, just a consistent program, right? They're always re, uh, reloading when they lose guys. They've had Trenton Barraza for what seems like forever. And uh, just, a, just a tremendous team. They do some really good work over there in Grove. And that's kind of the standard in the NWC that nope. a lot of teams are trying to achieve. Bluffton close last year, right? Finished 9-1. and one. That only lost to Columbus Grove at the end of the year. Now we're going to see Jackson Brown attempt a field goal rather than a PAT, but not much more. Yep. Well, that's what I was going to say when you're talking about, you know, <laughs> this Bluffton Pirate team. They know in order to keep progressing and take that next step, they've got to go through Columbus Grove. Yep, and that's they, right. they know what stands in front of them. And, you know, it's I still like that you get these big rivalry games as you see Brown's field goal up and good and we'll just keep it here just six minutes left to go and the clock continues to run here at Delphus Jefferson but though that game is going to be a week 10 game so everybody's going to know going into that game and I, I love it when it comes down to week 10 that there isn't anything more exciting than that you know but if you're the Pirates it's you, you still got to get through. I mean, Crestview is still looking very yep. good in the NWC. You still got to get through new member LCC and Fort Lormie. Fort Lormie has a lot of size. LCC only looks to continue, uh, keep getting better week to week. There are still a lot of challenges ahead, but if they're able to answer all of those and get to that showdown with Columbus Grove in week 10 for their conference title, you, you got to think that these are the types of games that can help build them for them. Not because they're blowout victories, but because these are the ones where you get to work on certain things and just kind of what we were talking about. You don't know when you're going to need to lean back on some of this experience early. Like, no, listen, we know this works, guys. We know that we can, we can this can't be throwaway time where we do things that aren't going to benefit us later in the season. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and you get, again, you get in games like this and it's easy to kind of lose focus. It's easy to tune out a little bit, right? But I know that Coach Richards and the coaching staff has done such a nice job making sure that these guys are locked in. Uh, you know, it, yes, they're going to win a lot of games by a lot of points, right? But you're right. There's something to learn in every game, in every quarter, and really on every play. And so every rep important as you start to build toward that week 10. But, man, there are some really good teams that can come out and, 
and knock you around. So Bluffton definitely has to take every game seriously and take it one week at a time. But certainly everyone has that week 10 game circle. You know, and if you're the Wildcats, obviously not the type of day that you were hoping for. Mm -hmm. Not You know, this is not how you were hoping that your Saturday afternoon would go. But it, it's a learning experience. We talked about how young they are. They have young guys all over the place. Um, you can see some of those guys coming out now um, for kickoff return as well. Coach Pullman getting those guys in, trying to get experience for them. This, these games, if you let them, can be very valuable to your growth as well. Well, right, and and I always, you know, I coach I coach sports as well, and you know, when our team gets blown out, whatever it is, I always look at them and I say, look, this is the standard, right? We just played a team that we want to be like. That team is really good. We need to look at the kinds of things that they do well and try to replicate those, right? We want a program like Bluff, and we want a program like Columbus Grove, and you play in these games and you get to see firsthand and feel firsthand what it's like to be a program like this and go up against a program like this, and, and it gives you a target, right? It gives you something to work toward. Five minutes left to go in this one as the Wildcats come back out on offense. We'll see if Agner is still out there at quarterback or not. Looks like he is. Yep, he's still going to lead this offense. As I'm sure Coach Pullman wants to keep working on things. As you know, this we're still young in the season. This is week four. There's a lot of football left to play. This is only one loss in the conference. That they still want to work through some things on offense and get things going in the right direction. Agner going to pull this one down. Goes right up the middle. A big down or a big gain. Excuse me. On first down, it'll lead to a least same as be Chicken first down. Yeah, nice read option there. Sees the defense shift to the outside on the fake, so he pulls it out and just runs right up the middle. Good job by the interior of the offensive line, getting a good push and just making plenty of space for him to run through. Plays getting run in. Lucas Millmine coming in to let Agner know what Coach Pullman would like to call. Agner going to drop back, looks to air this one out. Look back in the cross field. He has a man wide open as he goes into the middle into the hands of Lucas Milmine. Initially, it looked like he was looking for Nelson Miller, who was kind of running a modified wheel route on the far side and had gotten behind that defense. But Agner had traveled a little bit too far, I think, to the right. Wasn't going to be able to make that throw. Nice job of finding a wide open mill mine in the middle of the field. Yeah, but the good thing about that play is he kept his eyes down the left side the whole time and kind of got those safeties away from where he ended up throwing the football. So a nice job moving the defense with his eyes. Getting a nice pickup. It's a good catch too. Ball over the head and Absolutely. able to bring it in. Good hands by mill mine. So that's going to be another Lee's famous recipe chicken first down. Three minutes left to go in this one. Going to look to go onto that left side. Agner trying to direct traffic, pointing for his receiver to go downfield. But that pursuit of the Bluffton defense was too much. He had to pull that one down, gets forced out of bounds for a short loss. Really nice job there by Agner, not trying to force anything, just able to pull the ball down. I know he ends up going out of bounds for a loss, but that, you know, when you try to squeeze, or squeeze a ball in and uh, try to make a play, sometimes you can throw an interception or. Uh, something bad happens, so a good job just pulling it down, running out of bounds, making sure there's no further harm. Second and 11, ball into 39. Agner in the shotgun. Takes a snap. He's going to pull this one down, works through the middle yet again. Trying to make some guys miss. He takes a big hit from behind, but he manages to hold on to the football. And he will be marked down just past the 30-yard line, down to the 29. And that'll bring up third in short for the Wildcats. Dylan Painter on the tackle, coming back, making the play just shy of the line to gain. So third and short. And I'll tell you what, Evan, if anybody out there is watching this one and thinking that the second string from Bluffton out there right now on this defense, trying to get some work in, doesn't also know that they haven't given up points this less this year, then you don't know these Bluffton teams. This shutout means a lot to them as they found a wide open receiver to Rody. <laughs> as Luke Rohde takes it in for a lot of jewelry touchdown. And that's big because we talked about just finding things to walk away and, and feeling good about. 
This Jefferson team comes down the field, puts together a great drive, and they score on a Bluffton defense, whether it's the first string or second string, that had only given up one score yet this season. Yeah, that, and you know what? We talked about it. Agner, when he can set his feet, how nice of a ball he throws. That was on a road. My yes. goodness, that was a laser to the end zone. A great throw between two defenders right into the bread basket. Again, like, yes, it's 52 to 6. Make it 52 to 7. seven yep. But still, an incredible throw from Agner and exactly what you want at the end of the game. We, we need to get some momentum. We need to get something we can look at to say, hey, we're going to be okay. We're going to regroup. We're going to go into next week with some momentum. And I really like what they did right there. Braxton hurls for the Wildcats with the extra point. As the Wildcats got something going, and they're going to get to kick this one off to the Pirates. Final minute left to go in this one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. I'd also like to thank tonight's timeout sponsor, Metzger Financial Services. Metzger Financial Services is helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So the Wildcats finally able to get on the scoreboard as they trail 52-7 on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Going to be a short kick as the Pirates are just going to fall on it. They don't have to. Well, they will have to run another play. They just have to kneal it once, and then this game is over. Nope. Yep, Never mind. And that the clock is gonna, does start. Yep, and that is going to bring this one to a close. You know, Evan, we knew that the Wildcats were going to have a monumental task on their hands this week as this Bluffton team has looked so good here in the early season. And the Pirates came into Champions Field, and they dis didn't disappoint. They didn't, but I'll tell you what. We look at this second half. It, this The halftime score was 49-0, right? So a second half where it's 52-7, to seven, that feels, you know, it, it, you feel okay coming out in the second half, not rolling over, and coming out and uh, playing okay. So, yeah, it's a tough one, uh, but some things to take away. We talked about that last drive, especially that last pass. You can tell your offensive line, listen, when we give our quarterback some time, we can make some things happen. So, uh, great game from the Pirates, obviously, but I think Jefferson has some things that they can look to uh, next week. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Champions Field. I'd like to thank our crew today, Jacob and Nick, working the cameras and getting the editing done for us. We appreciate you guys. We get the easy work, Evan. I say it every single time. We get to come and talk about sports. That's the easy part. All this other technical stuff, they, they wouldn't trust us with anyway. <laughs> no, and they shouldn't. They shouldn't. <laughs> we appreciate everything you guys do for us each and every week. One final time, the Bluffton Pirates come into Champions Field and they knock off the Wildcats 52-7. For Evan Skillender, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.